Well, I was in Ohio reporting in advance of the primary from three weeks before the vote to two weeks before the vote. And Ohio is considered to be the sort of emblematic state. It has industry, it has farms, it has multiple medium-sized cities, it has one big city in the form of Cleveland. So everyone always says, you know, this sort of silly um, thing, as goes Ohio, so goes the country, because Ohio is so typical. Well, if Ohio is typical, then America is a wreck, because Ohio has suffered just tremendously over many, many years uh, before the Bush administration came into town, before the Clinton administration came into town. Around the late 70s and early 80s, Ohio industry began to decline. Basically what you've had is at least 50,000 jobs lost as a result of the North American Free Trade Agreement. Everyone's going after working class votes because working class people constitute the majority of voters in Ohio. Now some are farmers, some have industrial jobs, um, some are small business people, but you don't have a lot of people making a lot of money and both campaigns are going after those people. Their basic lines are addressed to what they believe those people want and need. And, and they do, I mean, to the extent that people say, we care about health care, we care about our kids being able to go to college, we care about jobs, we care about the destruction of our economy, we care about the war. Now, are the campaigns really responding to the real needs of people? No. And neither campaign is addressing the long decline that Ohio has experienced. Now, it's very clear why Hillary Clinton hasn't addressed that. She hasn't addressed that because she's running um, as really an extension of her husband and of the Clinton time of prosperity. In some ways, I think you can see this election in Ohio as a kind of referendum on the last remaining legacy of Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton is supposed to have, you know, his, his, his eight years in office are supposed to be the years of prosperity. They weren't years of prosperity for Ohio. But the Obama campaign is not capitalizing on this because he can hardly say, gee, the last time you had a Democrat and president for eight years, you know, you saw your fortunes tumble. Uh, one of the most exciting things that I witnessed was Youngstown, Ohio, which is a city that is just completely on its ass and has been on its ass for a very long time. It's about 50-50. Um, black and white had a, about 6,000 people plus at a rally for Obama that was a very kind of feel-good rally. The biggest applause line um, Obama got was when he said he was going to close Guantanamo, end the, the debate on torture, end, um, uh, restore habeas corpus, restore constitutional rights. I've heard this speech over and over. I have never heard the thunderous response to that. These kinds of things are meaningful. These kinds of things make people who are already desperate at least not feel ashamed. There's a kind of, a, a kind of, not quite cynicism, but sense that since these two candidates are not all that different on the issues, and since, um, and since it's unclear how much anyone is going to deliver for them, I think other things are kicking in. I think race, gender, that whole notion of hope, however you want to construe it, the whole notion of, of energy and if there is going to be uh, a kind of new day, if, if, we, if people are going to feel better, um, I, think, I think has a lot of meaning in this campaign. Basically, I think people feel like, like no matter who's elected under Democrats, under Republicans, the working class has not been at the forefront of anybody's uh, you know, thoughts.